This podcast is a production of Unfiltered Studios. If you would like to know more about joining Unfiltered Studios, please visit our website at unfpod.com for more information. Are you awake? <laughs> yes. Hi, I'm Peter Graves. And I'm entering this meeting to talk about bloopers. <laughs> oh, Hello, man. I'm Orson Welles. Welcome to a world where things are not what they seem, where actors forget lines, where things don't go as they planned. These are known as bloopers. <laughs> Oh, and I may or may not be the next of kin of Olivier. It's a story <laughs> for another day. Yeah, so we 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 love Gavin. We love planning these. We love just guffawing about just absurdity, just different practices behind the curtain, just kind of look into just how shit gets made and just the outrageous personas that are larger than life behind it. And we, and JJ was, and I were just talking about just various like bloopers we had heard of. And we were just like, well, let's, let's talk about our favorite ones. It's like the ones that just keep making lists, but we actually know the story behind it and everything. It's not for clickbait. Just like just something about it. It just made us go far. <laughs> just like, you can't yeah. be serious. This happened. This overpaid prick knew his line and he still was just an asshole. <laughs> well, it, it's not only that, but it's always like somebody has the recording button on. Yeah, and they just don't <laughs> they can't they keep pressing you know, it. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 that goes back to the days of radio, you know. Yes. When you know the, the, the there's a also Orson Wells. Thanks dude for giving you <laughs> yeah. a heart attack with War of the Worlds. That's one big blooper. Well, the one the one blooper my mother remembered when she was growing up was there was a children's show called Uncle Don, right? It was Uncle <laughs> Don, <laughs> Uncle Don McNeil, right? Or Uncle Don O'Neill was his name. Mm -hmm. And you know, every day he would, you know, he'd say, "Okay, kids, Uncle Don will see you next week." You know, and it was always like you know a really like fun, cheerful thing. So then one day he says, "Okay, kids, Uncle Don will see you next week." And the guy who was the engineer had the recording button on. And so, and you hear Uncle Don goes, "That'll hold the little bastards till the next time I'm on TV." Yeah, on, I on always the radio. heard a variation of it. I th yeah. always heard it the wrong way. Is like Captain, uh, Howdy Doody or some shit like that. Just like no, some Uncle, other Don. Uncle Don. Uncle okay, Don. Okay, so that was the Uncle one. Uncle Don. Right. Yeah, yeah, that'll shut those little shits up. <laughs> just Simpsons funny, did funny. it. Yeah, Simpsons would make fun of that. I, I always loved how South Park would make fun of that too. It was just if newscasters kept talking and saying shit that's <laughs> on their mind. It's it's such an underrated concept, and it's just so funny when you see it. And it's just, uh, I, I was telling JJ about this, and he didn't know about this. There was uh, Tom. Did you ever hear about this uh, Bill Shatner blooper? Oh, so, which one? It was a particular 2000s one, and he was basically being just stuck up, pretending like he didn't know what the director of the ad or the narration wanted. I'm going to do it the way you want it. And it's like, Shut yes, up. I am. I, I remember that when it was like he was doing it a, was after Christian was Bell. So they book. were all the rage. Everyone was like the chef <laughs> pulled a Christian Bell. Tom Cruise did it recently. Everybody wear your fucking mask. It's like, fuck you, Scientologists. I don't need you telling me <laughs> what I need. <laughs> I agree, they should wear your mask, but you're like, I would not jump off a cliff with Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> would well, not. Well, for him, for him, it's a cliff. For us, it'd be like a small hill. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah that, that, now that is short. 
<laughs> Don't get short with me. Oh my um, god. Do, do you like the ones that are often like on a DVD or Blu-ray, or do you prefer the ones that are just like TV special compilations? I I always love the ones that are on video. Like you just see them and you're like, like <laughs> oh my god, you know. I remember my parents got me one. It was Good Times Video put it out, and it was oh, I love that company. Star- it was yeah, it was the Star Trek bloopers, right? <gasps> oh yes, oh, and. And that was the one where they, it was the famous one with, uh, um, what was it like? You know, it's just them, it's them goofing off on the set. And, <laughs> Did they know, bleep the language the, or was it uncut? It was un, it was uncut. It was uncut. But then we got, then my father's like, okay, you're going to crack. So then a couple of years later, I'm going through the internet and they have, they had the Star Trek one, but then they had stuff with like McHale's Navy. <laughs> oh, I bet there's some good Ernest Borgnine oh, moments. Joe, Joe Flynn. No, no, it's Joe Flynn who steals the show. The guy who played uh the, mm-hmm. you know, oh, you know, oh, McHale, yeah, like, you know, yeah, yeah, teach yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. Um, he does. <laughs> he does this thing when you know, like he's talking to somebody. He says, well, "I told you that things are going on." Mike Cohen, like you know, the guy's going like giving this reaction shot of like. Holy shit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then there's one then there's one where he's like he's like he's like, you know, we gotta do something, Mikhail. And this guy runs in says, Yeah, hey, hey Captain, we gotta do something. The nips is crawling with beaches. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. And then they have a boat and they're singing Oom Papa Mau Mau. Oom Papa Mau. Oom, <laughs> Years Mau. before Jack Black was singing about peaches in this recent Mario Brothers movie. Um, no, that's awesome. I will definitely check that out because even when they were milder, we're before some of them actually let some serious not safe to air language, you know, explode. It was always just hysterical how like half the time you realize just looking into their eyes, they realize that the camera's not rolling, but they're still kind of like method acting and just going for it. And you're like, dude, mm-hmm. cut, cut. <laughs> well, Stop. <laughs> Warner brothers used to do a thing from like, I think maybe the mid thirties to the maybe mid forties, they would have a, a holiday uh, party. Right. Mm-hmm. And they would show, Jack the blue, the outtakes, in. yeah, <laughs> the outtakes, right from all the movies, <laughs> and there's stuff in there. I, I, I was literally on the floor hysterical when, you know, seeing Edward G. Robinson screw up or seeing, you know, um, try to Claude make it Rose work, go. even though he has yeah. to do it again. <laughs> and then there's one that I remember seeing. Well, this is going back a ways. Anybody remember the show Night Flight? Yes. Okay, that was on USA, right? So yes. one night, oh, wow. they, were, they were they were playing something and Porky Pig hits his hits his thumb and he goes son of a bit 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 and it's like and then they were showing all this stuff in between says son of a gun he thought I was gonna say son of a bitch <laughs> <laughs> I have seen that one I didn't realize it was featured in that one also uh, so it looks like Night Flight had some recent episodes in 2018. So I don't know yeah, if they're just they, compilations or YouTube only. It was YouTube. They put it back on for YouTube. That's cool. um, but uh, it, yeah, man. I, I take it I gotta talk about the Christian Bell one <laughs> to just see that dude mm-hmm. like the cinematographer like got some serious hate mail. They're like some people are divided or like, oh my god, you know, gun the actors way, and other people are like, yeah, that actor's a piece of work, don't worry about it. But I just love just using it as a prank call or as a soundboard thing. Just the whole just what don't you get about it? <laughs> just, just the build up to all the other insults. No, don't get me wrong. We've been about it before, I'm joking about garbage people and Christian Bell, the good actor, but piece of shit. But it was one of those is like I just I'll, I love how quotable I'll, it is. Sorry, I'll go one better. I'll go one better. Watching Klaus Kinski during Fitz Geraldo. Oh my god! Go off on, go off on. I think that's the entire Tom. movie. But yes, I know what you mean. Thomas Mouth <laughs> was the cinema, and he was making his food. He's like, "This is not good for pigs. This is shit." You know, I can't believe this fucking shit I go through. And he's looking at Herzog. Herzog's like, 
okay, you're not directing it at me. Don't worry about it. You know, it's fine. No problem. <laughs> you know, he goes, like, he goes, I don't have to Mickey. fire you, <laughs> but seriously, and I love, can you? I love it in German. He says, Viet one of the best films. And he's like, He's like, we're making a movie. You know, you got to fucking understand that. What bullshit is this? You know, this shit isn't meant for pigs. You know, and he's like, going, he's like, well, what do you want me to do? Just lick my ass. He's like, going, oh, God. Like, <laughs> you know, Holy. Dude, Kinski. Kinski's Tells like, how you really feel. Shit, you know? Jesus. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my Kinski's God. Just like, Kinski goes off on this tirade. And, like, you just see the guy. He's going off and going, okay, what do you want me to do? You know, he's like. He's just going, you know, you know, I'm gonna do, you know, he's like saying in German, like this, like this, like sort of like this, like weird, strange, you know, tirade that I've never heard of in my life. And trust me, I've been around people who've had tirades, and this was just like, what the fuck? Yeah, happened? right. You know, I'm convinced he really is an alien. He's a precursor to Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> oh yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Have you ever oh, seen the, yeah, in the same room at the same time? You see, I'm thinking. I'm thinking here. I'm going to do a little Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> you have a Warner Bros. on one side. You have you know, Tommy Wiseau on the other. And you've got me kind of in the middle. So maybe there's a whole alien kind of thing going <laughs> on. Maybe in Area 51. Maybe in Area 52. You never know. Did you? Oh my God. You 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 guys. When you talk about bloopers, I know. Uh. Cameron, you posted that um, famous Orson Welles drunk. I could, I, yes. I just knew it was coming up, so I just was resharing. Ah, ah. <laughs> it's just so stupid, time. but I love it. I love it. I love it. It's it should have been like someone should have re-edited it for like Adult Swim, like Space Ghost style, and then like added their own commentary to it. I think. <laughs> There's the famous frozen food commercial <laughs> that he did. Yes, he, we know a place where in the where you know peas grow there in July. In do you want me to in July? Do you want me to do you want me to 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 emphasize that? And it's the whole thing is him battling the engineer and the producer <laughs> on how this commercial should be run. Oh man, he he basically is still in director mode, and he's not taking the hint that they're running the tables. He doesn't get to just stick around. And he says this one thing: "Just show me how that works, and I'll go down on you." <laughs> <laughs> you know, and and the funny thing is, Pinky in the Brain did that perfectly with Maurice Lamarche doing the. Uh, doing the voice of Brain, who's the voice of Orson Welles. Yes. And here I am, a 21-year-old. I've heard the tape. I watched Pinky in the Brain one morning. I'm howling hysterically because Rob Paulson and him are, because the thing was, was that they could, he could do the whole tape, Maurice Lamar, <laughs> yes. super tape from top to bottom. I love Maurice. He... I, I take it you've seen their Sketchfest uh, rendition of Pulp Fiction, but they're doing it in Pinky in the Brain style. Yeah. No. yeah. Yes. Google it immediately. You will. I, I showed it to my yeah. friends, and they were like just clapping, like they were at actual play. <laughs> they're like standing uh, ovation. I'll, no. I'll throw in it. I'll. I'll they try to clean one. it up, um, and the parents keep I'm... interacting with them. So then they're just like, "Nah, fuck it. We'll just <laughs> we're doing an art. We're getting R rated here, folks." <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, but I'll, I'll throw in another one. Um, um, on one of the DVDs I have for Harvey Birdman, Attorney at Law, Maurice yes. does Orson Welles for Gary Cole, and Gary Cole is just cracking up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So many talented people on that fucking show. Pick up Brewster, Cole, yeah. him, and plenty of others, but man. Uh, with the amount of impressions <laughs> they study. Talented <laughs> people. What is that? <laughs> Dangly parts. Dangly. <laughs> Cookies on down. Oh God. Cookies on down. <laughs> we'll go down on you for cookies. What? <laughs> oh my God. I had another one. Um there, there are some good Mystery Science Theater ones. I gotta go with just like this particular just any just Frank cannot stop laughing. I think you know the one, but I was just so happy, I think around uh, mid-2000s, NBC would do some awesome 
uh oh Luther yeah compilations every other mm-hmm. year they haven't done it in a while but i loved how they would do syndicated stuff as well as ones from other ones like those good time ones i didn't have good times but i had another just one of those vhs collection of just bloopers from like every kind of thing just from presidents you know falling down the stairs to you know just all kinds of yeah, so. yours was yeah. some good times it was more the jeffersons uh <laughs> <laughs> different good time yeah <laughs> I, well, I, I used to i used to crack up when they'd show the bloopers from dark shadows oh god <laughs> like the tape would not be running but you know you would like there was one where the guy's talking and a fly a fly lands on his face and he's going he's going like oh it's just like giuliani like, you know, there you go oh um, <laughs> yeah i mean there was a couple on there like you know i i think who was i talking to one of the women on that show and the guy forgot to. She's like, "You were you were supposed to call him, remember?" Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Call him. Call him. <laughs> the best part about like even looking for bloopers half the time is when you hear rumors about two leads who hate each other's guts, and they're oh. not even in the same scene, and you can tell because nowadays everything is so over edited and like hush hush. To where it's like, yeah, just give me a break. I can tell the these best friends hate each other's guts because he's he or she is clearly talking to him in differently dressed stand in with hair that's not matching you know it's, it's always well, fun to look for that i always there's one you have to watch it's the um remember the show emergency yes yes the, the king of okay. all the- there is a blooper reel of emergency <laughs> with, with, with the whole cast and there's there's like there's one where the guy like they bring this guy and he's like well, what'd you do? Why does he have chest turn? Oh, he's having heart pains. And, uh, you know, I saw how they do that on the show, and, you know, the TV, and they I started hitting his chest. And, like, it was Bobby Troop. Bobby Troop turns to the guy and goes, Well, you dumb shit. You can almost kill him. <laughs> 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 and then, oh, man. Do, you remember, do you remember Chiffon? Do you remember Chiffon Butter? Remember the one? It's yes. not nice, nice to fool Mother Nature. Yeah, Robert, I I um, what's his, his name? name? The guy who played. The guy who played the dark-haired one, uh, not Bracken. Uh, uh, Robert Fuller. Ro- Robert Fuller, Fuller, right? Robert Fuller, oh, yeah. Robert Fuller is walking along, and the one nurse who was on the show was the one who was in the chiffon butter commercials, right? She turns <laughs> and goes, Dr. Bracken, it's not nice to fool Mother Nature. And she start, they, everybody started cracking up, you know. But they had, <laughs> they had it where there was one episode... Um, it was, it was one shot. They have it where all of a sudden Kent McCord comes in and he goes, Jesus, I'm in the wrong place again. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff that nowadays is a no brainer. Everyone just takes out duct tape or looks at the camera and boom, Mike. But yeah, it was like that. You look at any of these from the 40s to 70s, you can always tell when everyone's just not on the right track. It's like, okay. Mm-hmm speak we got to start speaking the same language but thank god you don't know your lines because otherwise we wouldn't get these you know 90 minutes of entertaining bloopers <laughs> well the the best the best one out there is the one that don that uh don rickles did with remember he had a show with richard lewis called daddy dearest oh wow yes yeah. okay and somebody put together the blooper reel of don rickles just going off at some point during the show like he would just start saying shit and it was funnier than the tv show and somebody said oh don at this point was forgetting his lines you know his memory was a little hazy and i'm thinking to myself bullshit don was not don was still in good shape at that point but he goes off on these t- i mean it's like one guy he says anybody got a drink of water and this black guy holds up a glass of horses Thank you <laughs> to your people. May they do what they're told. And you know, everybody goes, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. Then, then there's one where he's uh he's um oh shit, what the hell was it? Well that we're talking just about... person like sailors and oh, like we're trying to just... outdo all these guys tonight. Oh yeah, I mean I mean the one with Rickles I gotta I gotta put on I gotta show you guys because it's just I love it's just... him. I love him. Love that man. It yeah. was just so funny to watch, you know. And the one guy who was directing him was Howard Storm, and Howard Storm was the guy who directed Mork and Mindy. Oh yes, 
So yeah. there's a Mork and oh Mindy. There's a Mork. There's a Mork and Mindy blooper reel that I've seen. <laughs> when there's the official one and the unofficial one. Man. And the unofficial one is way funnier. <laughs> <laughs> because Robin Williams just goes off to somewhere, you know. So totally. yeah, that was that. You know, that's that's what I love about some of these blooper reels you find online. You know. <laughs> Did you ever see this one particular one of Siskel and Ebert cussing each other out? No. No. And they were just like, my face, I know you like that movie. Just shit like that. He was like, whoa. And I could never find it again. And I, I was just like, where did they find that? <laughs> where did they find that? <laughs> never got an answer. I was like, well, whoever found it, good find. That is, that's rich. <laughs> Do you remember? Do you remember all the blooper reels they used to show in the Hal Needham movies? Like, uh, yeah, Cam- like, yeah I, I do miss the Hal Needham or Jackie Chan style. I'll just have it actually be yeah. a part of the movie. Well, the Jackie Chan ones, we'd all be in the movie theater going, oh, like that, you know. Um, <laughs> right. Wow. Yeah, Who Am I? Who Am I was the one we all kind of went, ooh, or, uh, or uh, Drunken just- Master. Drunken Master, it? even ones that m- become part of the scene. I mean, Saturday Night Live's done that a bunch of times. Christopher Walken, I think, was back on back in like 07, and he's clearly having trouble like reading the teleprompter with his eye and uh, glasses on. So it ends up becoming unintentionally part of the scene. And <laughs> I can't say enough about Bill Hader and his, uh, uh, can't speak today uh stefan where he's just they're trying to get him to crack up uh but one particular one which i'm sure you guys saw that this is more entertainment radio but do you remember the time that uh howard stern had uh the band the rock band hum on and they couldn't find a proper it, it most people just remember who was that one band who couldn't it's like half of them had to play out in the hallway because of the echo or however the sound is set up. And they're just like, <laughs> how do you want us to do this? And the producers even more at what well, not not Baba Booby, but one of the other ones is like chasing them out. There's like, why are you coming back here? I can't have anyone back here. There's nowhere else to go. Oh. And then Howard Stern finally just yells at him, get the fuck in here. <laughs> get them the hell my, in here. <laughs> my favorite was uh when you talk about radio, Casey Kasem. Yes. Oh, I love oh, that one. You better stop telling me to do this and that. There's a ton I heard when I was a teenager. My sister had a tape, and this tape got passed around to a lot of people. You know, musicians would do it. You know, it was like the Jerky Boys or the Tube Bar. It's Casey Kasem doing America's Top 40, and he just becomes a complete and utter asshole. Yes, you know, what you know, he's like, you'll be hearing, you know, America's top 40 at 11 a.m. 11 a.m. What kind of a goddamn time is that? 11 a.m. <laughs> God damn it. And then, oh, and then man. there's the famous, the famous d- dead dog imitation, the, the, yeah. uh, the, the dead, dead dog, dog imitation, which I always the, wish no, the, dead, could do, the dead dog dedication. Oh, he's dedication. Like, yes. Yeah. So he's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, dear Casey, we just, you know, Everybody, you know, tell you, I come out with an upbeat song, and now I got to do, get, get, do an invitation for a goddamn fucking dead dog. Yeah. <laughs> and I always wish they would have synced that up with Scooby Doo and like overdub it. So, there's a line where he goes, Ponderous, effing Ponderous. <laughs> is Don on the phone? Is Don on the phone? Get Don on the phone and tell him that. I, and I mean, I I will sit there at work and I will listen to it if I'm having a shitty day at work. I will listen to it and I'll just say, "Ponderous, effing ponderous," like that. You know. <laughs> hey, where are those pictures I was supposed to oh see? Oh my god! Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are those pictures I was supposed to see? I don't know. Maybe Gene has them yet. Friggin' <laughs> little. Sh- <laughs> oh my god. Uh, and now we're I, and dedicated. Do you remember the time where he really hated playing George Michael music? He was just like, I'm not saying that title. I want your sex. Oh, music. yeah. Just the new George yeah. Michael single. That's all you're getting out of me. And make sure it's playing after AM. What kid needs to listen to this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was, I want your sex. 
It was. It was around the time Beverly Hills got too. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm but, not playing that song because of what it says. Yeah, but meanwhile, you're married to some woman who basically controls your life. Um, oops, right? Oops, right? Oh, oh my god! Very yeah. ugly. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, we, we let the mask slip, slip a little bit there, didn't we? Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Wait, we we gotta mention um, this, even though it's technically an on a partially recorded stand up. How can we not bring up Michael fucking Richards? Oh God! <laughs> I know it's oh, technically Jesus. not funny, but it's funny yeah. in that in terms of wow, <laughs> it's like that just happened. <laughs> that was your it was it was like you JJ. <laughs> The way it happened, it was like what it was like a Dr. Pepper commercial. Um, and then where he's an N-word, you're an N word, he's an N-word, wouldn't you like to be an N-word? Yeah, you know. Um uh, hello, hello. <laughs> yeah. I think it the was like Stooges oh. had some bloopers also, but yeah. It... Oh, there's some there's some classic bloopers they left in. Um <laughs> but I, I, that would I be think... every physical gag that didn't go the way yeah. I wanted it. <laughs> But I've, I've, I've always loved the fact that people have had tapes or video or, you know, it was always cassette tapes, but there was the one, there's the one my father, my father had the, the bloopers, the bloopers tape from Rhino, I think it was. Oh, I love oh. Rhino. Oh my God. Man. And that was the one that had the Trogs tapes. And what happened was the Trogs, the band, the Trogs, they did Wild Thing and A Girl Like You. They were getting back together to do another record, right? Yes. And oh they were God. having arguments about how how a certain song should sound. Oh, for the Every... Beatles or what? Which band? This was the Trogs. Oh, the Trogs. Okay. The Trogs. Okay. Oh, so the whole tape is the whole section of this tape is them saying, "I'm going to swear a lot when I say this." Fuck, fuck, fuck like, no. fuck, like, like, look, you don't get your fucking part right. You don't know what the fuck you're doing. Yeah, fucking chord changes are wrong. What the fuck you mean by that? I mean, the fucking chord changes are wrong. It's going da 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 Really? What the fuck do you do? Yeah, fucking, fuck it. It was like, and they got that broad North Country accent, like, well, fuck you, the whole fucking horse you're rolling in on. Yeah, fuck you, mate. So, <laughs> the whole time, the, the, the guy's hitting the record, you know, the guy's going, this is some good shit, you know. Um, so what happens is, is that they, they, somebody releases somebody like releases it and they and they they get called. I think Reg Presley, who's the lead singer, got called into the office. She said, "You guys got to hear this." He's like, "What?" It's like, "It's you guys." It's the guy who's recording you basically records you without you knowing it, and he's basically somebody got a bootleg copy of this. That's great, and it's like becoming a really big hit. <laughs> and Reg Presley was like wait a minute what he's like yeah this tape is like going around you guys are just they're laughing at what you're doing in the studio and and he's like well wait a minute why doesn't that wait a minute hold on he's like he's trying to figure it out in his head and he played the tape somebody played the tape to him and he started laughing hysterically <laughs> because he's like oh my god i can't believe it was like, yeah it became a big thing you know we'll return after these messages if you like small town mystery, crazy news, and wild history, then the Florida Men on Florida Man podcast is for you. Each week, Josh Mills and Wayne McCarty bring you the absolute best Florida has to offer. So if you're looking for a show that's safe for the family, but funny enough to help you escape everyday life, then listen to the Florida Men on Florida Man podcast. That's Florida Men, plural, on Florida Man podcast. Hey, it's Brent Pope, the host of Breakfast with Brent Pope. You've seen me on some of your favorite TV shows saying things like, give it up, Jimmy. You got to sink this putt to win. On Breakfast with Brent Pope, I sit down with guests from the entertainment world and we do it all over breakfast. Or should I say breakfast? Every week on Breakfast, you get inside Hollywood info and tips, great breakfast wrecks and booty debates. Most of all, you get the most delightful 30 minutes of your week. So dig in. It's breakfast time. Listen at breakfast.com, Apple Podcasts, or wherever fine podcasts are found. The Jacked Up Review Show podcast is honored to be part of the Blind Knowledge Podcast Network. Join anytime, talk the talk, and enjoy yourselves. There's something enlightening for everyone with this crowd of cool cats. Check them out.
if you remember, like they had the one, what was the the movie? Uh, Pardon my blooper. <laughs> yes. Yes. And uh, the guys like saying Herbert Hoover instead of Hoover Her, Her, Herbert Hoover. Um, you know, there's the one guy who says, "This is definitely the one one single on everybody's shit list instead of hit list." <laughs> <laughs> you know, the guy says, uh, "Excuse me, sir." The guy's at time says, "Yeah, what do you want?" He says, "Where's the Great Lakes? Upper U.S." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Man, oh man. Now the yeah, the one th- go ahead. Go ahead, Tom. No, there you go. All right. Um the ones that I particularly love and remember are ones where the people who are involved in it do their best to try to keep going and it turns <laughs> yes. into uh yeah. they turns into a clusterfuck beyond that. Um <laughs> the two shows that, that immediately come to mind for that is one is the Carol Burnett show. Yeah, oh, Kim, nice. Those are not necessarily bloopers, but you could tell that they were just trying to make each other laugh. Harvey Corman and Tim Conway. Goes a little too far. Yeah, <laughs> they, well, Con- they, those are the two that really stuck out. Is they're bloopers, but they're not really. They're not quite bloopers, but you can kind of. But they're trying their best to not necessarily cover up the mistake, but just try to avoid having to go completely into shambles even further. Oh, well, totally. there's the one where Tim Conway is playing. I don't know who he's playing. They're doing the fam- the mama sketch, you know, mama. He mm-hmm. talks about these elephants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the elephants in the circus one time. and The curtain. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, but one of them, you know, they would when they they sneeze, then you know, one of them goes <laughs> like that, and then stops. And Vicky Warren says, "Is that all you got, you little shit?" <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You quote this one on the regular, and I can't blame you. It's a golden line. It's like the immortalized blooper. <laughs> got any more? And then there's there's the one with uh, Har- what was it, Harvey Corman, and. Uh, him, I think it was no, it was it was uh Vicky Lawrence was playing Mama and uh Carol Burnett was playing Eunice and she says she's like talking to her, she's like she's like, You got splinters in the windmills of your mind, you know. You you your 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 thing has sprung a leak, like all that's good. Your pilot light's kinda of, she's like, You got anything else, Mama? And she goes, Yeah, she goes, Oh jeez, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I think I did I also, see on the newest uh, Blu-ray of the entire Planet of the Apes collection. There, there were some moments where you can clearly see some extras or stunt men, kind of like the bullet shells are almost hitting the, them in the face while they're playing the revolting apes. <laughs> and <laughs> it's a man with great evolved from men. A men, yeah. Um, I got to say one, one, one quick thing. Uh. It was a. There are some Star Trek Next Gen bloopers which are so hysterical because like Troy just keeps cursing and Riker's like, "Whoa, is you gonna use that?" (laughs) (laughs) It's like she just can't get her lines down, so she just starts going "fuck shit, fuck." (laughs) I wonder why Gates McFadden left. Um, (laughs) Ouch. And here oh. I thought it was because of Will Wheaton. Oh, ouch. <laughs> oh. Uh, Shut up, Wesley. <laughs> oh, my God. You can make a drinking game out of that. Um, I know they have, but um, there was one other one where it was like, there's like some some other guy who just went on an outrageous rant where he's just like, I can't believe I just read that. And I think it was after Christian Bell, but it almost echoed the Orson Welles one. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I can remember what it was. I'm trying to remember. Well, 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 JJ's helping me. Uh, there is a hysteric, it's not really a blooper, but it's just very cheesy and it just looks like the actors reading off a teleprompter. There's this Japanese like beer ad with Sean Connery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was, I only knew about it because Conan O'Brien kept showing like the Arnold Japanese food and drink ads and i was just <laughs> looking them up and it eventually led me to that one and i just started sharing it with my uncle and father who were big you know spy movie fans they're like oh my fucking lord of course 
<laughs> well, if you knew Shushi like I knew Shushi. Well, Shushi. Oh, yes. oh. oh my. He's when, off naked shit. <laughs> when you drink Hashimoto beer, you're the King Shamurai. What kind of shit drivel is this? I'm getting paid how much? <laughs> I was James Bond, god damn it. I dressed up in a red nappy for Zardos. Oh, and I made that movie called Right. Now shut up and give me my money. Give me more money. I'm not doing another one of those bloody Highland of pieces of shit. I want an actual movie with charisma. Yeah. <laughs> did you did you guys ever see the, the famous Betty Furness refrigerator one? No. I think you told okay. me about it, but I I didn't get that. This I, back I didn't in, you know how they used to do like uh live commercials back in the 50s yeah one take mm -hmm. literally one take <laughs> yes i think it was betty furness did a thing where she was supposed to do like a thing for a, a general electric freezer or a hot point or something like that <laughs> and open the door and she can't open the freaking door <laughs> i'm seeing it now it's a westinghouse tv commercial i think yes and okay. it's, she's like here's what happens when you're lasting yeah door open she can't open the door and then there was then there was one like the door kept opening she kept trying to close it the whole time <laughs> well there's oh, there's a famous one on the honeymooners where alice opens the door to the refrigerator to get ralph's dinner and the door just like opens up by itself he says and lisa just turns and goes yeah we gotta get that refrigerator door fixed and it, no and just you know one of those you know be quiet about the blooper bit you know <laughs> I love the uh, the Thundercats vocal outtakes. Oh wow! And I I can only That's imagine the... those voice actors being over dramatic and being like, "I can't get this <laughs> this take." Tom Kenny, no, Tom Kenny going, "Thunder, thunder, thunder!" Oh shit! What the hell am I saying this for? You know, he is then, amazing. But... <laughs> I remember um, an interview of him back in college during the two thousands where he just got he went to. Even the 2010s, he was very descriptive on how he's like, the best thing about any voice actor is I can do all these R-rated cartoons like Stripperella, and then I can do SpongeBob and uh, Transformers <laughs> and Star Wars. No, and, yeah. Larry Kenny, Larry Kenny. Oh. Larry, yeah, Larry Kenny, not Tom Kenny, Larry Kenny. Oh, man. Larry Kenny was doing the, that, those voice. Oh, like, that those dude, I know that. Yeah, yeah, he's like, thunder, thunder. He's like, yeah. he goes, Lino. What are we going to do? Shut the fuck up, Star. <laughs> <laughs> From the state. Oh my god, that's amazing. Oh man, I'm gonna plant this one right between her little. That's the line right there. I can't say it. You know. <laughs> oh my god. Did you notice how he cameoed in the L.A. Noir video game once again, playing the KTI radio announcer? It was basically a throwback. <laughs> Oh, oh! There's one. There's one in there when he when uh, Mumra Mumra goes, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, fucking hell, man! I, <laughs> that dude does not get talked about enough. But I love that voice. Mm. Oh, man. And, and yeah. like, I got it, like who is it? The guy Earl Wilson, the guy who played the fa uh the father on the Cosby Show. Um, Earl Hyman, Earl, or not Hyman, um, Earl, no, Earl Hyman, right? He played Panther. No, he... Earl Cosby Show, looking it up. Earl, oh, played... yeah, Earl Hyman, you got it, right? Earl Hyman hey. played Panther, and he goes like, he's like, he's like, well, I got to go with this sample flange. What the hell's a sample flange? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I. I would love to have been in those recording booths, like, you know, just hearing them. I would love to be the AD, just motioning to the director. I don't think they caught your drift of what you're going for. <laughs> this persona. <laughs> and just imagine having to relay that, you know, is like, I need more emotion. Now, often, yes, it's the director working one on one over the megaphone, uh, over the sound system with the producer and sound mixer. But it's even funnier when you do often see, I mean, I think I remember as far back of when Chicken Run was first a thing by the Wallace and Gromit guys and just actually mm -hmm. seeing them actually acted out in front of a green screen is like, 
but every once in a while on those kinds of movies you would see some kind of blooper where a prop or something hits someone in the face <laughs> uh what's the one that I, I think it's one of the one of the christmas carols back in the 30s or the 40s Scrooge <laughs> is looking into the uh into the mirror and you see one of the production hands like like pull the curtain that's behind him in the mirror just looking like <laughs> wait, wait oh shit we're like he's trying to look he doesn't realize they're filming so what they did was in the simpsons they did it where they're watching this movie and this guy walks in with like a cup of coffee looks at the camera and goes like oh shit and he runs back off again you know <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i would oh. be remiss if we didn't talk about a couple of other ones here about star wars episode four it had any stormtrooper galore. hitting the dam. Top oh of the yeah, dam. and Mark <laughs> Hamill call, calling uh, Princess Leia Carrie at the. Okay, let me clear that up. He okay. never said Carrie. He never said it. Okay, he I haven't didn't. seen it in a while. I only remember. No, he said hey like that, but the way he said it's such a high pitch. It sounds like Carrie, like you know Carrie, but even he, he even they had a guy who was like listening to it. He's like, no, he never said Carrie. <laughs> okay. Okay. That I, might I have been like that. I don't think maybe he did. You know. I take it you guys also saw the one. It was like a hidden Easter egg on the original, like when they re-released and did a few more like corrections of the special edition of the original uh, in 2004, and that they, they, you could see all these other bloopers that had the Cantina music playing over it, and one of them was the Jeremy Bullock is in his Boba Fett costume going around hunting wicked the ewok on set in between takes oh yeah (laughs) and you actually do see a laser thing come out of it like jesus (laughs) be very very quiet yeah i'm I'm sure mel blank or one of those other raids probably has one (laughs) oh yes i think there's gotta be a lot in the vault somewhere where they, they just went off you know (laughs) <laughs> right um I, i'm I'm sure harrison ford really told george lucas what for <laughs> now one show that um that had bloopers that I, that kind of go back to the term Burnett show with, with people trying to make it work even afterwards <laughs> the drew carey version of whose line is it anyway oh yeah. yes. yes those are i love I you guys you're gonna on the regular because they are so freaking funny i do and too. how they and the thing one of the ones that really stuck out with me was um when one Ryan where crashes his head into drew's desk <laughs> that was that was one of them he was playing okay. <laughs> one of the many. <laughs> oh my God. but the one that really stuck out to me was one that kind of became a running gag throughout the <laughs> throughout some of the episodes um one of them was being that um it was an episode where somebody from the audience came down to help out with, or actually take that back. It was um, Wayne Brady went out into the audience, picked out an audience member, picked yeah, her Yeah, accidentally showed their underwear. I just rewatched that one. Oh my God. <laughs> and then it became a running joke in the hoedown. <laughs> yeah, Colin hates doing Brian hoedown. Uh, I, I think it, you've also seen the one where, um, shit, it's really hysterical, uh, where the, the only time we actually see one of like uh the overseeing producers it's not the main two producer yes. duos he comes on out he's like you can't do bill cosby and hitler and imagine the irony <laughs> yes it's like that's okay you can joke about him now but yeah it's like they changed it to yeah to bill cosby and i forget what they changed it to but they just throughout the it rest was, of the episode they're making hitler what references. happened yeah, basically, the, Cos- they they tell him you can't you, uh, sing do a duet about Bill Cosby and Hitler. It's got to be Bill Cosby Hitler. and somebody else. And this is one of those where it's just like, well, I mean, what's the harm? No one's getting offended. Us making fun of Hitler, <laughs> and they they just keep <laughs> inserting it throughout the rest of the game. Well, you- yes, I can't t- I can't talk about the. I'll I'll, sh- I'll send you the clip. In fact. Better yet, you're on Instagram. I'll just share you my link I uploaded. Of it. Oh, you're, that is one of the funniest things, and ever. And there is one, and I'll say that uh, I'll say this to my dying day. I'll die on this hill. Colin Mockery is Mockery. by far <laughs> yeah. just the um, embodiment. He has this talent for not only cracking up everybody else, but by 
but keeping it completely straight when he yes. does. Yes. Oh my God. He's like, like, there was he's the like, greatest hits one that I always love is that he was talking about. They were trying to. They were kind of going back and forth and say, "Oh, we're not sure. What, we're not sure. We're not sure what we're what we were what you were watching just now." And he said, "Oh, we're watching animal porn." <laughs> <laughs> and then without missing a beat he says Murray had a little lamb and <laughs> <laughs> yes I, I have seen the Mary lamb moment oh my god he he is an ace in that he will he will go in a direction where no one even expects him to go and uh I mean I, I on the Aisha Tyler one he was he's really gotten even better with just the uh music infomercial ones he's like we interrupt your Liam Neeson uh, dating movie, Mistaken, after this message. <laughs> it's like he just will, all, he gets even more pop culture savvy and just other moments where he just flat out just tells Ryan, stop, let me talk. <laughs> well, it's like, it's like, what, it's like what Tim Conway could do with, with, you know, making people crack up. He, he's just so, when you watch the show, he's just so straight faced with what he says. And then right. also Ryan Stiles jumps in. He's like, all right, let's get these two together. Now, I, I used to watch it was Ryan Stiles, Tom Kenny, um, uh, Brian. it was the British one, the British one. <laughs> oh, yes, I'm so glad you mentioned that. I just saw Stephen Frost on Ted Lasso as a stadium, yeah, guard, and I was like, awesome, I missed that dude, he was dynamite. Peter Cook was on a couple of those Peter shows. Peter Cook, was, Jonathan mm-hmm. Price, um, of all people. Oh, my god, yeah, yeah, they had a lot, they had a lot of. Uh, Josie, what's her name, was in that too. Josie Lawrence, um, I just saw her. Yeah, but Greg Proops well. was on was on an episode or two. I know. Yeah, he yeah, wasn't Greg, quite. That's who was. It was Greg Proops. Greg he was Proops in a bunch. Of uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Deborah Wilson and Phil Lamar were doing one. They decided to have some Mad TV guys come on there. But yeah, um, yes, uh, I will add Robin admit, Williams. Robin yeah. Williams. Oh, yeah. God. Yes, he and Whoopi were on the American one, but then. Uh, I will say uh, they definitely they either got way better at giving either Greg got better or they came up with better ones that you could actually guess when they did the dating game because on the UK one uh, like it just Greg could not guess anything and to where he was just like well you guys gave me nothing to work with and it's like they made it less complex on Drew's version but even funnier at the same time it's like oh, yeah. of course and he's a headless chicken going around terrorizing people or he's this and that and it's just like yeah that's just that's just comedy gold huh. but oh. I, I'm, I'm sure you can find plenty of other bloopers at, at one point and I kid you not they tackle a guy in the audience and it's one of the deputies, not Bubba, the other bald guy from in the heat of the night. He just happens to be part of the LA crew. He's like, oh, okay. what, are, what are you guys doing? But uh, there's plenty of other Conan O'Brien segments where you can just kind of like a Robin Williams blooper. You can totally see the camera moving because they're trying to not guffaw at what Andy or Conan's about to do. <laughs> well, what was the one I was watching uh, something where somewhere that like you you could see the camera shaking a little bit. <laughs> Some TV show, you could see the camera shaking a little bit. Like the guys like trying hard not to laugh. Uh, <laughs> I Ernie Kovacs used to do that. Like he, he like oh, there's a great Ernie Kovacs one. He does one where it's a German version of the Lone Ranger called Einsinger Afsaher. <laughs> and every, everything's in German. The guy who plays Tonto comes around and slips and falls. He says, Guten Tag, Kimosabi. Guten <laughs> Tag. You know, and... Oh my God. Oh, what politically incorrect bloopers you can't even just air. Like, just everyone would get offended <laughs> now and be like, fuck that guy. Um... Oh, there's a, there's, a fa- there's a famous one that wasn't even, it's not even, a, it's like, oh my God, I can't believe he said that. Um, there was a, a guy here in WCBS um, channel two called Jim Jensen, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was, he was, he was like one of these old crusty, you know, reporters Like he didn't like anybody younger than him. So there was a, woman <laughs> with, there was a woman, a reporter called Bree Walker, right? And Bree Walker had that this thing like where a great her aunt, procedural Bree Walker. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> what happened was, was that she was talking about how, um, you know, children, you know, children now can be you know, spotted for physical birth defects and whatnot. And he just turns to her and says, 
oh, like, you know, what happened with you? Your parents could have aborted you before you, but you knew it. Oh, my oh. God. I think that's what he said. I got to look it up. <laughs> oh, my I, God. I, I just remember, I just remember the look on her face was just like, what the fuck did you just say? Yeah. And then there's another one, Tex Antoine. Um, <sighs> you guys know who Tex Antoine was? No, I think, I think. he was the weather. He was the weatherman on WABC. He oh, was Uncle okay. Weather. He was Doug, Uncle. He was Uncle Weatherby on. And I, I read this right. He was Uncle Weatherby on CBS, and the last day he was there, he says, "Well, Uncle Weatherby's going to be leaving now." And you know, remember the weather is always as easy as W A as the letters A B and C, right? So <laughs> they were all known to tip a few back or whatnot right so <laughs> the story goes is Grimsby Roger Grimsby and Bill Butel are doing a story about um, like a 13 year old girl who got raped okay Jeez. and Ugh. says now here's Tex Antoine with the weather and he turns around and he says well you know Confucius say about rape just lie back and enjoy it oh, oh and, buddy and you you actually heard, I think Grimsby say "son of a bitch" and get up, and Butel had to hold him down for like thirty seconds. Yeah, he wasn't gonna put up with shit like that. He got yeah he that was like that was bad. And then the one where uh, who was it? Sue Simmons said, "What the fuck is going on?" They were doing live at five, which was like the pre-show for the five, five o'clock for the six o'clock news. Mm-hmm. And she said, what the fuck? You know, and she, everybody just went, whoa. You know, I used to see, I used to love when they'd catch them off guard with the camera. You know, that was mm-hmm. always the one I love, you know, like, you know, like someone was like, you know, like they would say, so, you know, feds, 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 uh, raid, you know, feds raid, uh, you know, the playoffs from the And then at some point you hear like, you, you, one time they did it, and I swear to God, I heard the newscaster say, "That's so goddamn terrible." The way that was read, I mean, it was just like, <laughs> "Whoa!" Zing, you know? Yeah, it's just amazing how some of these guys thought they weren't even going to be like put on the spot or anything. It's like, no, this is what you're saying. <laughs> it was at that time they realized they fucked up. <laughs> Oh, uh, man. I mean, probably a famous blooper that's actually pretty cool. It, it would be probably Bruce Willis's stunt double in the original Die Hard, where he almost <laughs> falls down the elevator shaft and they kept it in to add realism. <laughs> oh. I think I think the one I've always loved is if you've ever seen the, uh, the one where they were doing Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. Barbara Streisand is dressed up like in a leather outfit, and she goes, "This is for Hanover Street." This wait, is wait, 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 wait. Okay, on what? Okay, so they're doing Temple of Doom, right? And on, they do on, this on what at, show? Like on, to, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. They're filming it. Oh, okay, okay, so, okay caption, not. Barbara. Yeah. Okay. So Whatever. Indiana, so Harrison Ford's tied up, right? Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden. You you hear it's Barbara Streisand comes in, and she's dressed up like a dominatrix in leather. And she goes, what? "He's like, well, this? this is for Hanover Street. This is for Fourth Ten from Navarone. This is oh, for more wow. America." <laughs> then all of a sudden, this person walks in, runs in, and says, "She says, who is it? Who is that? Who is that touching me?" And it's Carrie Fisher. She takes off the hood. And she goes, "Someone who loves you." And and <laughs> and and all of a sudden, Barbara Streisand goes. Jesus Christ, I thought you were a goddamn faggot. And all of a sudden, <laughs> Irwin Kirshner walks in. Irvin Kirshner walks in, the guy from Empire, and goes, what the hell's the matter with you people? You're not doing this scene right. I mean, I was howling my ass off on that, man. Jeez. <laughs> Bet they can't put that on the special features. <laughs> no, but I, I think somebody will put that in there one day, you know. Yeah, they might. But to, see Bar- but to see Barbara Streisand, like, all in leather and everything, it was just, oh. It was just so fucking hilarious, you know. I bet. I mean, to just... <laughs> I'm just not even thinking. <laughs> oh, man. This wild, wild, wild. <laughs> I actually don't think... Actually, I can't overstreet, but I know it's... It, it's 
I mean, we got to talk about freaking Beatles uh, bloopers. I got to talk about Chuck Berry saying, why did you invite mm-hmm. Yoko Ono in here? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> entire jazz session. And they're just like, wait, what? <laughs> the look on his face is like priceless when she starts, when they start oh. playing and she starts doing her, she starts saying, yeah, yeah. And he's just looking at John Lennon going, you married this bitch? <laughs> oh man i mean i mean i mean i'm gonna have a videotape of me one day doing something terrible but jesus christ you know you know you should have stayed with the blonde you know? oh. <laughs> yeah i i've i've yeah there's there's the famous chuck berry tape you guys should look up that i've heard about wait with besides me. that one Besides that one, yeah, there's a Chuck Berry tape where he supposedly I've read about it. If you have the Tenacious D CD, when uh, he, when Jack Black says, "I want my breakfast," okay, <laughs> yes, I love that album. Oh my god, he, he, uh, he, it's it's a reference from something that Chuck Berry did to someone on a video, t- a woman on a videotape, and I was like, "Are you fucking kidding?" Like you know, uh, and. <laughs> And supposedly now there, auto- man. Yeah. yeah, there's this autobiography now of him and they're saying, Yeah, it happened. They've seen the tape, it happened, you know. Jeez. I was like I was like, Jesus, this guy was great musician, one of my great you know, one of my biggest husbands. What a depraved piece of shit, you know. Mm, I, I, I believe it. It seems like there's a lot of guys is like you don't want to know what they're like in person. They're just that shitty. <laughs> Give me my oh, breath. And going into the music element of it, uh, there was. Remember <laughs> the Bloodhound Gang? Yeah. Oh, you and they're big. I... They're big uh, CD hooray for boobies. Yeah, I'm. I'm going to a deep dive here. Um, one of them has a. It has a secret track on there of two Broadway uh, actors singing hooray for boobies and they are just cracking up because they it can't quite get everything done and they once one of them starts laughing the other one starts laughing and it just uh, so kids if you're interested <laughs> in hearing two broadway actor two noted broadway actors singing about boobies check out the blood home gang hooray for boobies <laughs> did you ever hear the, the some of the tapes from uh like the the ta- like i have a copy of the birds um, Notorious Bird Brothers, um, which is the last album David Crosby was on, <laughs> and they're doing a song called Dolphin Smile, and Michael Clark can't get the beat right, and David Crosby is like, "Come on, motherfucker, get the goddamn beat right!" Like he's just fucking antagonizing Michael Clark, right? And Michael <laughs> Clark's like, "Look, I'm trying to get it right. I'm just, it's just too hard." And like you hear McGuinn going, "Okay, come on, just you know, just get it together." And like, Crosby's just going, you know, suck it, suck it, you suck, you suck, you know, it's like, holy shit, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. Um oh, was go ahead. There's one there's one tape you have to listen to. That's a, not a blooper tape, but it, somebody recorded it. It's uh Buddy Rich. Mm-hmm. Mouthing off to his band. <laughs> oh, I will get this to you after the fuck after the podcast. Buddy Rich, one night he's playing with a band. It's all these guys, and uh, he's like, Okay, James, you're breaking up. Uh, everything okay? Okay, am I there? Yes, you are there. Okay. So what he happens? Was is, here. So Buddy Rich is pl- like plays with these guys. They're on a bus, and then he starts going off on them, and <laughs> everything is like the f bomb dropped. You guys don't know how to play out there. You're reading charts. You're blowing. You're putting notes where they shouldn't be. What the hell's going on? I've been doing this shit for. And the, any of you fuckers want to? So this one guy stands up and he's like, he's like, he's like, well, I don't think you're doing this right. Who the hell are you gonna tell me I'm not doing this right? <laughs> it's the funny and Seinfeld heard it and put they part of it in it. there for his for one of the episodes. 
so the awesome. Buddy Rich tape is well known, and also the um, <laughs> the Paul Anker one, where he tells the guys, "These guys get shirts. <laughs> You're not playing in this. You guys are getting shirts because they were playing like <laughs> in t-shirts and whatnot, and he didn't like that. You know, you guys get <laughs> shirts. Get these guys some shirts. You know, <laughs> sorry. Oh, that's great because." Once again, you know, just we're seeing these guys who are very calm typically and just we don't expect it. So that's why it makes it even funnier. But then, like you say, sometimes it's not funny, funny, but it's just still amusing in that. Yes, that so many will just reference it down the road and you're like, oh, get out. I thought I was the only one who knew about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Oh. All together, I mean, why do these rule? <laughs> I think it's, it takes the, I think it's the great thing to see, like, anybody can fuck up. Mm -hmm. Anybody can be an yeah. asshole. Anybody can be funny, you know, like do a real serious, and then they get funny. You know, that's the great <laughs> thing about that, you know. Yeah, a um, right. big part of it is schadenfreude. Yeah. We, we love to see the the big, the powerful, the mighty, the the revered, take a take it on the chin every once in a while. <laughs> yes. Oh man. Follow us on the web on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The podcast is available on Podbean, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor, Apple, and anywhere else podcasts are available. Feel free to review our show and leave comments on any of those sites. Thanks a million for listening. It's a jacked up